That was an excellent movie, wasn't it? Written by my pal Stephen King. Did you guys know that Big Steve was hit by a truck at the same time we were showing his movie Maximum Overdrive about killer trucks? Amazing, isn't it? Steve, if you're watching from your hospital bed, get well soon, buddy. Okay, Joe Bob's Summer School starts in a few minutes. Pre-Med 101. Our first movie is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and I'll be building my own creature, and hopefully my guest lecturer, plastic surgeon Kenneth Saporin, will help me out, because I'd like her to be well-proportioned, if you know what I mean. Okay, people, stop waxing your board and oiling up your deltoids because it's time for the 1999 session of Joe Bob's Summer School. And I'm Joe Bob Briggs, but you will refer to me as Professor Joe Bob. Yes, sir. Is that to be understood? And for the next nine weeks, I own your soul. <laughs> Last year was the remedial course. This year is the college course. So don't think you can just skate your way through it this time. You will, you will be given an exam at the end of the term on Labor Day, redeemable for course credit at Southern Arizona State Community College at Ajo, one of the few American educational institutions to offer goat roping as a major. We will be covering a full range of subjects over the next nine weeks, starting tonight with Pre-Med 101, hence the outfit. We're starting with pre-med so we can weed out the slackers. Our instructional films are the medical thrillers Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and The Surgeon, and I will be demonstrating how to build a human being, <laughs> as well as showing you the actual medical procedures necessary for Hollywood stardom, including augmentation, reduction, lifting, shrinking, and sucking that stuff out of there. With the help of my special guest lecturer, Beverly Hills plastic surgeon, Kenneth Saporin. In fact, we may use some of the former parts of certain television stars to construct our creature, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. Now, there are two things you need to know for this year's course. The first is that it's okay for the really gorgeous female students to fool around with the professor because we're in college now, and that's what they do in college, right? This will affect your grade. The second thing you need to know is that the summer school syllabus and final exam are on our website, and if you pass the course, you will be awarded this diploma, well, we don't have one right now, <laughs> but it's good for employment applications at one-hour photo processing booths in most areas of South Dakota. And if you never got your diploma in the mail last summer, that's because the guy at TNT who was supposed to send him out flunked the course, so we fired him. And apparently, you won't get one this summer either. Okay, I have just enough time to cover the first part of our anatomy lesson. The brain, also known as the noodle, the noggin, the gray matter, the stuff between your ears, and in the case of automobile accidents, that stuff on the pavement. It is composed of five parts. One, the medulla oblongata. This is what regulates your breathing, your heartbeat, and your ability to pronounce the words medulla oblongata. <laughs> Two, the pons. Little guy in here. This is what regulates your ability to enjoy Playboy magazine and your ability to eat your aunt's holiday muffins without contorting the facial muscles. Three, the cerebellum, the greenie here. As you can see, this part of the brain looks like a piece of beef jerky that's been thrown up by a sheepdog, and it gives your eardrums the ability to tell the difference between 16th century Italian opera and a dump truck running over a big wheel. Four, the cerebrum. This is called the most mysterious part of the brain. The only thing we know is that it gives man the ability to do the pony without falling over. And finally, the midbrain, way down in there. The midbrain is kind of an exit on the brain interstate, connecting the pons and the cerebellum with the cerebrum. And in recent years, many people in California have chosen to do without the midbrain or had it surgically removed by a Sausalito, California surgeon named Lance Withers. Okay, let's get started with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, where that wacky mad scientist Kenneth Branagh sticks the brain of John Cleese into the body of Robert De Niro and wrestles around with him in three tons of KY jelly until De Niro takes off to learn how to play the recorder and speak in the American accent so he can tell Kenneth Branagh that he wants to take Branagh's wife to the North Pole. Let's just not go there, okay? Check it out. And let me remind you that I will be building my own creature as we watch the flick, and she's going to be much better looking than Branagh's creature, all right? We'll begin with the brain. The first procedure will program this being to fetch my medicine on command. I mentioned that this is a female that we're building, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
okay, you screwed up again, didn't you? It's your fifth year in junior college. Your life has no possibility of improving. Not true if you attend yet another session of Joe Bob's Summer School. Nine brain-expanding Saturday nights good for actual credit at Southern Arizona State Community College at Ajo. But you need to enroll your hiney. To register, you got to go to the Summer School website and get a syllabus. Plus, you'll be able to see who some of our guest lecturers are this summer. And you'll also get a sneak peek at a few of the final exam questions. And you can even include yourself in our summer yearbook, listing your worst subject and favorite hobbies. The internet address for Joe Bob's Summer school is tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school that doesn't mean you can skip the dang class of course even academic probation is fun at joe bob summer school saturday nights on turner national technical institute visit joe bob summer school at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school this tnt presentation is brought to you by ford maker of vehicles that are built to last Back to Joe Bob's Summer School and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein on TNT. I am Victor. Frankenstein. I don't think Kenneth Branagh paused long enough before finishing that line, did he? See, that's the problem when the director of the movie is also the star, because the editor goes, you know, Ken, I, I can do a cutaway to Aiden Quinn and trim your line there a little bit. And Branagh says, no, stay on me. Close up on the chest hair. Good. <laughs> Anyhow, we've moved into the lab here and, uh, at Joe Bob Summer School, and we're going to start our creation. And I am working, of course, from the 1991 Snap-on Tools Girls of the South calendar. It's, all, it's the best one that they ever did. We're going to do a composite. I've got all the parts ready. We've got, uh, we've got legs. We got, uh, of course, we got, we got the head and the torso. What pervert did this? I can't. And then we got, uh, we got your two arms, and uh, I'll fix that. Oh, my God, I think we got, these are two left arms here. Well, we'll fix that before the next break. And uh, don't forget that our guest lecturer is uh, plastic surgeon Kenneth Saporin. He'll be here a little later. And, uh, okay, Kenneth Branagh is going to make sure nobody ever dies again even though it's going to cause a heck of a population problem. Go. Do we have a right arm somewhere? Because I was, uh, I don't want to have a two left arm. That would be a freaky thing or a, oh, well, now we can have a three arm because, but, you know, I think she's right-handed. But the bride of Joe Bob is going to need both hands, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. <laughs> First, there was my TNT Monster Vision website with the famous caption contest, which is still going strong, I might add. Then we added the incredibly sexy Monster Vision t-shirt, coveted by would-be prize winners everywhere. Then we added the Find That Flick contest, in which you can win all kinds of free junk just by knowing the plots of weird movies. And now we proudly present Joe Bob's Summer School website, which is the perfect companion to my summer-long movie lineup on TNT. Well, not the perfect companion. Jennifer Lopez would be the perfect companion. But my point is, I'm slowly building an empire here at TNT. It's no longer possible to take me lightly. And I'll take just as much time as I want with this promo. OK, to find out your class assignments and guest lecturers, get on the information superhighway and drive to tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. And Enroll at Joe Bob Summer School now at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. Back to Joe Bob's Summer School and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein on TNT. John Cleese as a slightly deranged brain surgery professor. That is inspired casting. But what's Amadeus doing in this movie? Did Tom Hulse have a few costumes left over that he wanted to wear again? Here's a little coinky dink. Kenneth Branagh was originally going to play Mozart in Amadeus. But then the studio decided they wanted an American cast, so Milos Forman cast Tom Hulse. And you know why? Because he was the only guy who looked believable playing the piano. Of course, around here, we remember Tom most fondly as the fret boy in Animal House who can't decide if he should have sex with the passed out drunk girl. Okay, it's pre-med night, and we got a right arm. Finally got a right arm for the bride of Joe Bob, so we're gonna attach that in a minute. And uh, I've got some Lee press-on nails because there's nothing more important for a bride than important nail grooming. <laughs> and uh, you have to be a skilled medical technician with a degree from the best at-home correspondence course to do this. But uh, <laughs> it's looking pretty good, isn't it? And um, I'll have...
have our guest plastic surgeon look all this over later. All right, back to the movie. And by the way, I have to do this for standards and practices. These are simulated body parts. I did not gather actual body parts to do this bit, because see, if we don't say that, standards and practices says kids will carve up their sister for fun. So we're opposed to the carving up of siblings. Thank you. <laughs> when you enter the caption contest and you don't win, do not write us a letter saying his caption sucks. Let's be good sports about this, OK? After all, the only reason you're so angry is that the stakes are so low. One measly Monster Vision t-shirt. Because if the prize is that cheap and you don't win it, it kind of brings into question your potential in all areas, right? But let's not dwell on that. If you think your caption is hilarious, then come on down to the website and try to make the six-headed jury laugh. That address is tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. And here's a tip. Think sixth grade humor. We love that. Try to win a free t-shirt in our caption contest on the one and only Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob's Summer School and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein on TNT. So uh, what was the logic behind Robert De Niro having superhuman strength? I forget. Let's see, he didn't want to get his smallpox vaccination, so he stabbed a member of Monty Python, and then they hanged him in front of a bloodthirsty mob, and while he was dead, somebody else's leg was sewed onto his, and then he was boiled in a big kettle and hooked up to electric eels until he came back to life. And so he's strong enough to uh, hack through the frozen tundra in order to harvest vegetables. Is that about it? OK. I always liked De Niro. You know, Bobby and I have a lot in common. Yeah, like we were both defamed by a French newspaper when they linked us to a Paris prostitution ring. You know, that whole thing. Except he won his lawsuit. See, that's because during questioning, he admitted that he had an affair with a call girl, but he said he never paid her for the sex. Whereas I took one look at the gal and fell to my knees and said, "Hun, whatever you're making, I'll double it. <laughs> and that wasn't even the hooker. That was the stenographer at the hearing. So no wonder I lost the case. Anyhow, De Niro was getting ready to record a CD of Pope John Paul's poetry. Yes, you heard me right. De Niro reading papal poetry, but the invitation was rescinded after the Paris incident. Can you believe that? The Vatican, man. What a bunch of weenies. Yeah. OK, I'll tell you another hard luck De Niro story later. The man has had such a hard life. Let's get back to Frankenstein. He didn't pay the hooker for the sex. Jeez. OK, fire away. I can take it. Hit me with your best shot. You're going to reduce me to tears, aren't you? You're going to emasculate me with your mail, as usual. But if you got something to say about tonight's movie, or me, or the male girl, or the war in Kosovo, then I invite you, because I am a masochist, to contact me at my personal email address, monstervision at turner.com, or you can visit the MonsterVision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision, and send a crushing mean-spirited email from there. Or you can even do it the old-fashioned way by sending a letter to Monster Vision, care of TNT Programming, 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. So I've given you three ways to nuke me. I would remind you, God is watching what you write. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob's Summer School and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein on TNT. Why is this called Mary Shelley's Frankenstein? Why do they put Mary Shelley's name in the title? Do you know how many novelists and screenwriters beg to have their name prominently featured on a movie? And the studios always say, no. Nobody cares diddly squat about who wrote the movie. And people say, well, what about Stephen King? You put his name on the movie. And they say, well, his name helps sell the movie. They used to put Zane Gray's name on the westerns, you know, because he'd sold so many novels. All the Zane Grey nuts would go see the film. But why Mary Shelley? This is the only book she ever wrote. <laughs> I mean, it's not like people are saying, oh, the latest from that Mary Shelley gal. <laughs> and she's been dead for what, 150 years? I mean, is it some attempt to make girls like the movie? Anyhow, if anybody knows why they did that, write in and let me know, because stuff like that really bothers me. OK, this is a part of the movie where we see how sensitive the monster is. And oh, excuse me. Kenneth Branagh didn't allow the word monster on the set. They had to call it the creature. I have a question, though. Why doesn't the creature have the memories of John Cleese? It's his brain. 
De Niro's not even doing a, a, an English accent for that, you know? You know, for a much more logical take on this subject, you guys should check out a TV movie from years ago with Mayor Winningham called Who is Julia? About this gorgeous model whose body gets munched in a car wreck so they transplant her brain into the body of an average-looking woman, and then her rich boyfriend dumps her and she has a nervous breakdown because she's so average-looking. Very tragic. Look for it on Lifetime. Which reminds me, the bride of Joe Bob doesn't have any organs yet. Okay? So, uh, where does this go? Does anybody know? She needs one of these, and, uh, well, let's just kind of stick it in this general area. And uh, where is Dr. Sapporin, our plastic surgeon? This is something she's got to have one of these, because that's, that's the lining for the other thing. I should have put this in first. And, uh, okay. And uh, what do you mean? Dr. Sapporin is what? He's in consultation really with uh, one of the TNT executives, that huh? Will Which one? That even more oh well, okay. Well, anyway, we'll just we'll just throw all these in here, and uh, I guarantee you that. Uh, and oh, and uh, that was the liver, and you can't have liver without onion, right? <laughs> so, uh, and we don't have. Yeah, oh, and we don't want her to have bad breath if she has onions. So, you know, give her a little of that. All right, there. Okay, back to the movie. We're getting silly, aren't we? These are human organs, though, aren't they? Where do we get these? Don't ask, right? Rusty the Mail Girl here, inviting you to visit our Monster Vision website. This is the place to get the scoop on zombies, ghouls, road warriors, or whatever happens to be the late-breaking story on this week's show. Check out our Playmate of the Week, or try your luck at the Monster Vision Caption Contest and win a free T-shirt. Or visit Joe Bob's mailbag page where you can see your favorite fan mail of the week. To find us on the internet, go to tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. I'll be waiting. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob's Summer School and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein on TNT. Who exactly is that blonde gal they just hanged? This Frankenstein family has relationships going on that I don't even want to know about. Which makes sense, because Mary Shelley's family was pretty dang weird, too. Her daddy taught her to read by having her trace the inscription on her mother's tombstone every day. So, basically, she was the original goth. She wrote Frankenstein, which is considered to be the first sci-fi novel when she was only 19. And little did she know that it was to inspire not only Kenneth Branagh and James Whale, who made the classic Boris Karloff Frankenstein, but such great films as I Was a Teenage Frankenstein, Frankenstein Meets the Space Monster, and, of course, Frankenhooker. Okay, that last segment was just a little short, don't you think? What was it, about 40 seconds? But I do want to remind you that our guest lecturer for the uh, coming up later will be Beverly Hills plastic surgeon Kenneth Saporin. All right, how about if I just want the fuller lips? How about if I just want just more? <laughs> prettier? Well, there's things that you can inject or place into the lips. And I have to keep the plugging the guy because I think one of the TNT executives is going to try and get some free plastic surgery out of him or something. He's been here for, what, two hours? And he, like, can't make his way out here? Everybody's talking to him? Okay, back to the flick. This next part is amazing. You know, Kenneth Branagh is going to walk across the Alps with nothing but a fanny pack and some turkey jerky. Watch. My favorite Frankenstein, though, you know what? It's the one that was made for TNT a few years back, starring Randy Quaid as the monster. I really think that one is better than this one. And you know how it kills me inside to compliment the TNT high sheriffs. I mean, I'm in pain right now just from saying that. Think you're funnier than Joe Bob? Who isn't, right? But can you prove it? Then enter the Monster Vision Caption Contest and try to make the six-headed jury laugh. And no, I'm not one of the heads. What do you win if you slay them with your caption? How about this incredibly collectible t-shirt? To play, go to tnt.turner.com forward slash monster vision and look for the caption contest link and may the best man, woman, or mutant win. Everyone's eligible. Oh, except Joe Bob. We've heard enough from him, don't you think? Play the monster caption contest and win a free t-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash monster vision. Back to Joe Bob's Summer School and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein on TNT. Okay, hang on just a minute. I am programming The Bride of Joe Bob. We've got the uh, best of Betty Crocker, uh, Kama Sutra, 
and inside the NFL 1963-97. So we'll just put all of that in there. And uh, who here remembers the Frankenstein TNT made about six years ago with Randy Quaid in it that I mentioned before? Am I the only one who thinks that movie was better than this one? Yeah, remember. This virgin is, uh, this is so, let's just say it starts with a P and ends in retentious, okay? <laughs> okay, another quick De Niro story. Many years ago, this nightclub singer out in L.A. Filed, filed a paternity suit against De Niro. So De Niro starts paying her child support to the tune of 10 grand a month for 10 years. One day, De Niro doesn't make his payments, so the mother hires this big Hollywood lawyer and they take him to court. The judge makes him do DNA tests, and guess what? The tests come up negative. De Niro's not the father. So let's see. $10,000 a month times 12 is, whoa, $120,000 a year times 10 years is 1.2 mil, and that's not even the scary part. This Hollywood lawyer tries to convince the judge that De Niro still owed child support because he'd taken on the role of father figure in the kid's life by paying child support for all those years for someone else's kid. Bobby, if you're watching right now, allow me to just say this. I had a child about 10 years ago. I think he's yours, man. But I'm willing to settle out of court, okay? Back to the flick. And uh, don't forget, during, uh, a little later here, cosmetic surgeon Kenneth Saporin We'll be discussing women's breasts. Anything to promote the show. Oh, man. You know why I don't like this Frankenstein as much as the TNT version? I don't want to dwell on this, but in this movie, he killed that little kid on purpose. Randy Quaid didn't mean to do it. So you can still sympathize with him right up until the end. As far as I can see here, De Niro has to hasta la pasta himself out of here because I don't see any way around the child murder episode, you know? At this point, he's like one of those bears in Yellowstone Park who mauls a camper, you know? Nothing you can do. Back to Joe Bob's Summer School and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein on TNT. Well, I just love that part where Kenneth Branagh is trying to get to second base through Helena Bonham Carter's cardboard corset. De Niro gets right through it, though, doesn't he? In fact, he goes a little too far. Which base is it when you tear out the girl's heart with your bare hands? I think that's, that's like fifth base. This is a real bodice ripper, literally. More proof that Victor Frankenstein hasn't seen enough horror flicks. When the monster arrives, stay together, right? Is that not in the top 10 rules? Have we not gone over this enough? Okay, I was gonna animate the bride of Joe Bob now, but I don't know, I'm, I'm getting nervous, you know, as the moment of truth comes, and uh, you know what I need? I need advice. I need, uh, I need advice from someone like, oh, I don't know, you know, like Eugene Levy or something, and, uh, you know, <laughs> this is Eugene. an amazing coincidence because you're here uh -huh. I was just across the hall taping a special, and 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 this is this is just too much for words. Well, here's what I need to know, Eugene. It's like, what what do you think? Uh, is it? I, I I've picked out her bridal ensemble. Uh, ensemble. What do you think? Uh, sexy yet demure. It's uh, well. You it's... can go with clothes if you wish. Uh huh. Well, we kind of have to on. Or just table. remove the blanket. But I. Uh, this is well. What now? That we, you're trying to animate her. Well, yes, we're going to do that, and probably... You should take her over to Disney. Right, okay, well... Because they're the best animators in the business, and that's right. just my opinion, and that's for what it's worth. All right, well, think about that, and uh, while we take... We're going to take a minute here for the little feature we call Joe Bob's Shameless Plugs, uh, because there's a movie opening. Actually, it opened yesterday, I think, uh, and I, I watched the movie. I, I saw it. I was there on opening day, and uh, Eugene, you're in it. It's called American Pie. Yeah, and uh, it's the timeless story of four guys trying to lose their virginity before they graduate high school. Not exactly a new story, but uh, done pretty well. I'm not one of the guys. No, you're not no. one of the guys, but no. it has some very funny moments in it. And among the funniest ones are the ones featuring actor, writer, director, comedy genius, Eugene Levy, and I'm a Thank big you fan much. of yours, SCTV alumnus. And, Thank you uh, very much, Joe Bob. And uh, you know, it's appropriate that you're here for Joe Bob's summer school because in this movie, in which you absolutely steal several scenes, you're kind of in the role of a teacher, correct? Well, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a father. I'm a father teaching, uh, giving my son kind of a uh, little uh, birds and bees talk that I, uh, that I forgot to do when he was maybe, you know, 
12 years old, now he's 17. And that is the scene that had me on the floor. You're, you're kind of deciding, don't fight with nature. You want your son, played by Jason Biggs, to uh, get the best possible information about everything. And um, I only want the best for him. Let's watch that, OK? All right, well, it was great having you here, Eugene. And, well, it was uh, nice being here. I'd like to have you back when we show one of your movies, because we've, we've shown some of your movies. So we could actually, you know, go scene by scene with you, and you could give us sort of a cinematic analysis of what's going on. That would be good. In fact, I'd love to show Waiting for Guffman on this program. That'd be Ooh. great, which you co-wrote and I guess also, produced, and, right? Also, <laughs> a very funny movie. <laughs> <laughs> OK, come back to see us, all right, Eugene? OK. And, uh, we, you know, we have all kinds of people here tonight. Is that Dr. Saporin in the wings, that guy? Doc, watch out for the woman in the gray suit, Doc. If she corners you, just tell her you have a no freebies policy, all right? And now, Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Ah, wasn't that sweet? That movie didn't make a lick of sense, I tell you. Where did that father business come from? Kenneth Branagh causes the creature nothing but pain and heartache and refuses to give him the girl and by the way, given the way she looks, I'm glad Frankenstein wasn't specializing in plastic surgery back in med school. So anyway, then the creature gets all weepy when he dies. Kenneth Branagh wasn't his father. John Cleese's father was his father. Or Dr. De Niro's father was his father, depending on whether you think the soul resides in the brain or the body. Speaking of which, I know where the soul of the bride of Joe Bob resides, definitely in the body. So let me just add a few final ingredients here. We have deodorant, and we have hairspray. And uh, so let's just kind of, you know, take care of her here. And of course, and of course, the final ingredient, a little bit of this. <laughs> ah, OK. Let's turn her on. Yeah. Liv, come on. I'll be right with you. Um, before I consummate my marriage here, um, I want to let you know that next week's class here at Joe Bob's Summer School is uh, Pop Culture 201, where I'll be lecturing on the road movie uh, while showing the classic uh, Blues Brothers, along with your favorite movie uh, uh, um, about a nerd who loses his bicycle, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Um, right now, though, uh, it's time for uh, part two <laughs> of uh, Pre-Med 101, featuring a movie n made in, in, in 1994, the same year as, as Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and uh, that, that didn't quite get as much press. It's that uh, classic tale of a mad scientist who, who witnesses his brother's death as a child and uh, years later starts crawling around through hospital air ducts, jabbing anyone who gives him attitude with an elephant-sized hypodermic and making their veins explode all over the place. So uh, I'm uh, talking about, of course, the surgeon. So let's do those drive-in totals and get it started. We have 12 dead bodies, uh, one dead baboon, uh, one breast, keep your eyes peeled, uh, one tracheotomy, uh, hand rearranging, uh, thumbectomy, one motor vehicle pedestrian collision, strangling, lip sewing, bitch slapping, hand stabbing, needle to the eyeball, needle to the brain, knife to the chest, sharp thingy through the chest, four gallons of blood, gratuitous swimming pool makeout session, carbon dioxide foo, electroshock therapy foo, three stars. Check it out and I'll be discussing various surgical techniques with our guest lecturer, Dr. Kenneth Saporin, as we go along. <sighs> Honey, I believe Professor Joe Bob's gonna have to see you after school. No, I'm not your da uh, Yeah, I'm your daddy. Uh, <laughs> come with me. <laughs> Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Well, did you see it? 
in the foreground, biggest day. It's not often that TNT lets a hooter get by like that. I think they were distracted by the woman's veins bursting under her skin or something. Because that was one of the grossest scenes I've seen since the one in Blood Sucking Freaks. Remember that movie involving an unnatural sex act with a decapitated head? But let's not get sidetracked because Speaking of Hooters, our special guest lecturer is here, and uh, he's a well-respected Beverly Hills plastic and reconstructive surgeon who's graciously agreed to join us and answer our questions about the many procedures that he performs, Dr. Kenneth Saporin. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. And, uh, Welcome to Joe Bob's Summer School. And uh, so what's available these days for the woman who wants to, you know, live up to her full potential? Well, basically, everything's available, depending on where they want to You can work on every start. square inch of that body, right? From head to toe. Okay, well, let's start with uh, breast augmentation. That's, that gets the most publicity. I, I don't know, that just came to mind, since it relates to the scene that we just watched. And uh, right. you like that for an excuse? I'm getting your mentality. All right. <laughs> okay. What are the different techniques for breast augmentation, and which one can a woman use for the most natural effect because that's what they go for now is they want to be natural well i want my breasts to be different but i want to be natural right well not everyone but the majority of women want to be natural but you'd be surprised to how many women actually request almost an unnatural look some women want it depends on whether they want roundness or fullness at the top of their breast which is the more augmented look whether or, or opposed to a natural sloping breast did you ever see a girl named Tiffany Towers that works at the Cheetah Club in Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really, really, I'm asking no. you this question because some of these girls get them so big. I've never been they, to Atlanta. Well, but. okay, all right, all right. Well, well they, she works in L.A. too, but they want them. There's for, a lot of Tiffany's around. Okay, <laughs> they want them for professional right. reasons. They get them, like, for right. business well, that's, reasons. Sure, and, I mean, you have to, that's what I'm saying. And from my perspective, every case needs to be individualized. And you, the, the operation is only as good as really what you have to start with. All right. Well, I understand you brought some visual aids with you. Can you, can you show us what your, what your working materials sure. are? Sure. Well, the current uh, implants in use today are really mostly saline implants. And these are two saline implants. This is yeah. a smooth, round implant, which is can I? one option. Please don't <laughs> squeeze too You can play, but don't play okay. too long with it. <laughs> and and uh, that's a smooth, round saline implant. Okay. And this is a anatomic, textured implant. What's the difference? So, well, the difference is, purportedly, this anatomic implant is a more natural appearing implant once it's placed in the pocket underneath either the breast tissue or underneath the muscle. Yeah. It, you can see that there's more fill down oh. here in the lower aspect of the implant than there is up here. And supposedly it should give you a, a more gradual uh, projecting breast, whereas a round implant gives you a little bit more fullness superiorly. I like to use a round implant in patients whose, whose breasts are sort of drooping and so they need more fullness at the top, whereas someone who's really small um, I prefer to use an anatomic implant, but, you know, it, it all it depends that, upon the what consultation. What is that huge one on your knee? This, <laughs> this is a silicone implant, and it's actually... Are um, those illegal now? No, they're not illegal. Oh, they're not. Um, there um, are certain protocols that need to be followed to use them now. Usually, they're used in breast reconstruction. Uh, or if a woman has silicone implants in already and she wants them removed and replaced with other silicone implants, or if you're doing a little minor um, raising of the breast, you can use a silicone implant. But silicone right. implants have actually um, kind of gotten a bad rap. I mean, I think there are local problems with it, but even recently papers have uh, been published that uh, kind of uh, take the silicone off the hook in terms of relationship between the silicone and systemic diseases like arthritis or connective tissue diseases. So I think they're, they're safe. Yeah. Well, how can you encourage women who are considering breast augmentation, but, but they're, like, they're like on the fence? If someone is on the fence, I think getting in and talking to someone who can tell them all the different alternatives that exist today and what the state of the art is, that they would understand that it it, you know, it is an elective procedure. There are certain risks, but generally, I think it's a safe and effective operation. Okay, well, you heard what he says. All I have to say to those women is, big is beautiful. Okay, let's get back to the flick, and we'll talk more with Dr. Sephora at the next break. He knows I'm kidding. Okay.
okay, you screwed up again, didn't you? It's your fifth year in junior college. Your life has no possibility of improving. Not true if you attend yet another session of Joe Bob's Summer School. Nine brain-expanding Saturday nights good for actual credit at Southern Arizona State Community College at Ajo. But you need to enroll your hiney. To register, you got to go to the Summer School website and get a syllabus. Plus, you'll be able to see who some of our guest lecturers are this summer. And you'll also get a sneak peek at a few of the final exam questions. And you can even include yourself in our summer yearbook, listing your worst subject and favorite hobbies. The internet address for Joe Bob's Summer school is tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school that doesn't mean you can skip the dang class of course even academic probation is fun at joe bob summer school saturday nights on turner national technical institute visit joe bob summer school at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school back to joe bob summer school and the surgeon on tnt Wow, Malcolm McDowell dies in the second reel again. You know, you got to think he's making these deals on purpose. He says, what, you want to pay me a half million? OK, but would you kill me off quick? Because i got to be in Aspen next week or something. <laughs> he's always dead by the second reel. It's pre-midnight here at Joe Bob Summer School, and we're here with our guest lecturer, plastic surgeon Kenneth Saporin. And uh, Ken, let's talk about the plastic surgery men are getting. Now, I don't need it, of course, but okay, I, I, I got to ask you a okay. question. I mean, can you tell me how you use that device? Because, I mean, I've, I, I've been a doctor for a while. I went through medical school. I've never used one of those. I don't, I mean, maybe I could learn something from being here. Really? You've never yeah. worn these in, no, in your whole, no. your whole looks, medical career? It looks see, like a hole in a piece of glass. We think we're being so dang authentic on Joe Bob Center <laughs> School. And here I am, I've just got like a miner's lamp on my head or something. But I just thought I'd ask you, are plastic surgeons the ones who do penile implants no general i'm generally that's done by urologists oh penile implants oh. now that's there's a difference between a penile implant and a penile enlargement a, a penile well, okay. implant can be used <laughs> penile implant can be used for impotence um and yes. it's, it's a device not too dissimilar to a breast implant which can be inflated or deflated to mimic the, uh, the natural uh, rising and falling. What do you use say? to inflate it? Is you know, saline. Well, there's you there's usually a port. Here. There's a port that you can press, which will cause the saline to enter the implant. Oh, like a and, little pump? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you don't do those. No, no. Why don't you do those? I. I'm not trained to do those, nor is it an interest of mine. Oh, okay. Well, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Okay. Here's my next question for the men. Um, uh, what are we doing about baldness? Um, well, there's a lot of uh, options in terms of baldness right now. The simplest thing is to ignore it. Um, and as you progress from there, there's medical management of baldness, and that includes Rogaine, which is... And, that works. And not, I guess I'm a pretty good example of the things that don't work. But <laughs> Rogaine, which is a topical um, ointment, and that needs to be applied twice a day, and it doesn't give you the, the best results. It, from there, there's another medication, which is neural medication, which is called Propecia. And that's a pill that you take once a day. And I've seen variable results with that. I've had some patients who've had excellent hair growth and uh, almost uh, an amazing transformation. And then I've had patients who really didn't have that much of an effect at all. You and, ever and take those before and after pictures of your of your uh, oh. plug work? Oh, sure. That's probably not the right word for it, but sure, but, yeah, uh, I appreciate for, that. For uh, uh, you know, you know, hair like restoration, hair club for yeah. men pictures. You know, oh, where yeah. you have the guy, sure. and that. And, and are they dramatic? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're okay. very dramatic. And I think the technique has evolved to the point where it's, it's easy and it's very natural, um, depending, once again, on, on what you're starting with and how much you have to work with. Okay, what other kind of things are men having done? Well, I, obviously the, the most common procedure the man undergoes is hair restoration. But liposuction is also you know, fairly Beer common. Guts? amongst men, yes, and, and the love handles. Uh -huh. you, I notice you're wearing a loose shirt. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> you know. You know, rhinoplasty, 
um, uh -huh. nose job uh, is, is something that's popular among men, but uh, I would say those three are, are the most common procedures for men. All right, well, let's watch some more of the flick, and we'll get back to this at the next break, but uh, what about those, uh, those uh, pectoral implants? Do you think I could do with some... Uh, well, what could I get for, like... We'd have to get them custom-made, but... Yeah. <laughs> you do those, though? Yeah. Pectoral implants? Yeah, I'm not not commonly it's not a common what could procedure. i get for like uh 200 bucks <laughs> maybe a little um laser hair removal of your left ear or... oh okay <laughs> both you know both ears like one one nipple both. for 200 bucks first there was my tnt monster vision website with the famous caption contest which is still going strong i might add then we added the incredibly sexy monster vision t-shirt coveted by would-be prize winners everywhere then we added the find that flick contest in which you can win all kinds of free junk just by knowing the plots of weird movies and now we proudly present joe bob's summer school website which is the perfect companion to my summer long movie lineup on tnt well, not the perfect companion. Jennifer Lopez would be the perfect companion. But my point is, I'm slowly building an empire here at TNT. It's no longer possible to take me lightly. And I'll take just as much time as I want with this promo. OK, to find out your class assignments and guest lecturers, get on the information superhighway and drive to tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. And Enroll at Joe Bob Summer School now at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Ouch! Yale School of Drama graduate Sean Haberly as the psychotic Dr. Matar doing the medical procedure known as slamming your hand in a drawer. And of course, we all recognize Peter Boyle as Lieutenant McElwain. Peter Boyle, the only monk turned sitcom star that I know of, currently in Everybody Loves Raymond by way of Taxi Driver and Beyond the Poseidon Adventure guy with some range. All right, as you know, it's pre-med 101 night, and we're still here with our guest lecturer, plastic surgeon, Dr. Kenneth, Kenneth Saporin. So, Doc, do women come in with pictures of celebrities and models, and they say, uh, I want to look like this? Yeah, um, that's not uncommon. Yeah. Um, what look is the most popular right now? Who do they come in and show you? Well, it, you know, it depends on what type of procedure they're interested in. Um, you know, obviously, um, women who are interested in breast augmentation oftentimes bring pictures from either Victoria's Secrets or Playboy or whatever a magazine that they like to read. But no it, particular model? No, no particular model really, really comes to mind, no. I know lip jobs are, are really big. Or I call them lip jobs. I, I use all the technical terms with you, <laughs> Doctor. But, but I've been noticing women here and there who's, that, whose lips are a little out of whack, like like one side is a sofa cushion and the other side is a beanbag chair, you know? And what's going on there? You when mean they, like they, upper versus lower or both? Oh, this no, different like side, side to upper. side. They're that, like you know, not that's, quite lined up. Well, there's different forms of lip augmentation, and you could either use the patient's own tissue, which is a autologous tissue, meaning taking fat from somewhere else, which they love that. It's easy to sell them on removing the fat. <laughs> yeah. But then injecting it in the lip is, is a whole other story. But the... It, the technique has advanced to the point where some people are getting very nice results with injecting autologous fat and getting it to stay at least about 75% of it permanently. There's also other tissues that I should tell you that you can put in there. There's Gore-Tex. Um, Gore-Tex? Yeah. That's, that's what they make ski jackets out of. They do, but that you could also put it in your in your lips as well really and you would be very and, warm the rest of yeah. your life wouldn't you yes <laughs> and, but it still applies don't eat the yellow snow no matter what. <laughs> okay let me ask you this now be honest with me when a patient of yours is married i mean you're you're in beverly hills you're in the heart of beverly hills a lot of guys in beverly hills they've got trophy wives okay the heart of they beverly. come in is it generally the woman or her husband who wants her to get the surgery they come in together right I mean, well, that's, you have situations like yeah, that, Yeah, right? certainly you certainly have. Well, I wouldn't want to operate on someone who wasn't motivated by, by themselves. Yeah. I don't think you are likely to get a successful result when someone is motivated by somebody else. And I think it's important. You mean it won't work? The plastic surgery no, won't work? No, the plastic work surgery will not... work, but I think the, the psyche of the patient, especially of a cosmetic plastic surgery patient, is very important in terms of the final outcome. 
And if someone is not self-motivated, but motivated by someone else or something, some extraneous force, I, I, I'm very wary of that type of patient. So I yeah. like to have patients who want something for themselves. Okay, well, all right, that was a good answer, Doctor. <laughs> okay, we're going to get back to the surgeon. And uh, Dr. Sporting, can you stick around a little bit longer? Because I have a few more things to ask you. Okay. All right. I, I, I know you probably can't. Oh, I, I want to ask you this. You, I know you can't name names because that would be against your Hippocratic oath and everything. But just answer yes or no. Do you have any celebrity patients? Yes. Which ones? <laughs> Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Did the psycho surgeon just kill Mother Love? <laughs> Outstanding, you know? Mother Love, she's she's a good actress, but she's getting really famous these days with that syndicated show, Forgive or Forget, where these people come on and tell a story about why they no longer speak to their sister because they slept with her husband or something. And then they walk over to this big door, and if the sister forgives them, then she walks through the door and they hug. And if she doesn't forgive them, it's just the person standing alone on the stage. <laughs> Talk about your cruel TV moment yeah. on the Mother Love Show. Anyhow, Beverly Hills plastic surgeon Kenneth Saporin is our guest lecturer. And uh, do you do reconstructive surgery after car accidents and stuff? Yes. Yeah. Occasionally. It's... You want to share with us the most gruesome assignment you've ever had? Well, I've done a lot of... Um, grotesque work and uh, I've had been involved in the care of patients who've had terrible accidents from you know very compound complex lower extremity fractures with exposed bone and lost tissue and um, but I would have to say the most aff affected I've ever been in a case was uh, actually reattaching a penis really oh. yeah was that successful Yes. And yes. what was your job? What was your part of it? <laughs> um, I actually sewed the, the small blood vessels back together to reestablish the blood supply. And is that penis in good working condition today? You know, I don't really know exactly <laughs> the details. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's viable. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have complete sensation. And it uh, doesn't get erect at this time. But oh. it's there, and he's able to use it for other things. Okay. Well, I want to ask you this, because this just came out in the National Enquirer. Liposuction secrets of the stars. Now, I'm not implying that you have anything to do with this article. But uh, the, the National Enquirer, like, took all these pictures of all these people who had lipos, or, or who had liposuction recently, and then just because it is the National Enquirer, they just took pictures of people that they think need liposuction. <laughs> and, uh, and those are actually fairly interesting. Now, there's a, I don't want to show this, you know, because it would be cruel, but there's a picture here of Val Kilmer. Uh, could you help him out? Would you, would you recommend liposuction for Val? I, I wouldn't recommend it unless he wanted it, but I, I think there's room for improvement. So, so if there's just like a gut, a, a major, major gut, is that a good way to do it, or do you, why, why don't you? Why don't? Why wouldn't a doctor just tell somebody go to the gym, get to the gym, bud? I, I do that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, it, once again, everything needs to be individualized, and okay. it depends upon the patient, their motivations, the extent of the problem. Is it uh, overall? body habitus with total morbid obesity or their localized fat collection. Total that... morbid obesity. <laughs> that, that's a term I haven't heard before. Morbid obesity? Is that a medical term? Oh, yeah. Morbid obesity? And what, what is that? Is that like that guy in Brooklyn that can't get out of his house because he's too big to go through the door, that stuff? That's very morbid. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I mean, even, even sort of morbid yeah. would be... Yeah, I mean, the, the strict definition is above... I, I'm not even 100% sure now, but like over 50% of your ideal body weight is considered... Over 50%? So if your ideal weight is 150, it would be like 225 would be morbid obesity? No, no. Well, maybe it's 100% <laughs> Oh, so your 150 ideal would be like 300, but... <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what model of Mercedes do you drive, Dr. Support? <laughs> I'm kidding. 
little good-natured teasing, okay? Let's get back to the movie. And um, you got the leather interior in there. I know. It's a Jaguar, isn't it? <laughs> Want to win a free video of some obscure horror movie you've never heard of that some guy in West Virginia made in his basement? Of course you do. That's why umpteen jillion people have discovered our Find That Flick contest. If you've never heard of it, Forget it, it's too complicated to explain on TV. But you can find out all about it on our MonsterVision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash MonsterVision. And I'll give you one clue. If you're one of those guys who never leaves his apartment except to rent videos, this contest was designed to give heretofore unrealized meaning to your life. Play the Find That Flick contest at tnt.turner.com forward slash MonsterVision. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Do they really make hypodermic needles that big, or is that just movie magic hypos? Because cinematic psycho hypos, you know, that thing was like, woo. I like the way they know exactly what the psycho is thinking. You know, he's collecting pituitary extract, of course. And uh, I see the filmmakers here utilize the 26th rule of filmmaking. All buildings have a system of air ducts which run throughout them, allowing anyone access to any part of the building at all times. OK, well, wait, I can ask you, Doc. Do they really make hypodermic needles the size of bicycle pumps? Are there hypos that are this big? No, I've never used one. Never seen one. OK. <laughs> Dr. Saporin, I want to thank you so much for being here at Joe Bob's Summer School. We give each of our guest lecturers a book as a parting gift. This is a tradition here, and we got, we got one. I think you're gonna enjoy this. It's a, it's a Harlequin super romance, not just a Harlequin romance, but a Harlequin super romance called Falling for the Doctor. And you haven't already read this, have you? No. <laughs> okay, so uh, there you go. Thank, Thank you for you. being with us. And by the way, how many, how many plastic surgeons, how many plastic surgeons date their patients? I hope I wouldn't go there. You wouldn't go there because I know I've heard these stories. Come on. No. No? no. Never? Ever? I, I would wait a long time after, the after plastic they surgery. were a patient. I, it just, I, How many plastic surgeons? You can get into big trouble right. there. You Really? Sure. How many plastic surgeons have married their patients? I'm, sh I'm sure there's some out there, but I. I don't have any exact numbers on it. It's not, a, it's not published in the journals. So. OK. You think it's a bad idea. <laughs> I don't believe you for a minute. OK, thanks again for being here. We're going to go back to the flick now. And uh, he's collecting pituitary extract. How did they know that? I couldn't even figure that out, and I'm certified. I'm certified by the American Board of you know, Peripheral Care Division, Northwest Wing. Ask for Mary Lou. <laughs> when you enter the caption contest and you don't win, do not write us a letter saying his caption sucks. Let's be good sports about this, okay? After all, the only reason you're so angry is that the stakes are so low. One measly Monster Vision t-shirt. Because if the prize is that cheap and you don't win it, it kind of brings into question your potential in all areas, right? But let's not dwell on that. If you think your caption is hilarious, then come on down to the website and try to make the six-headed jury laugh. That address is tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. And here's a tip. Think sixth grade humor. We love that. Try to win a free t-shirt in our caption contest on the one and only Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Well, the lip sewing was a nice touch, wasn't it? And uh, having the psycho surgeon be the ex-boyfriend of Isabel Glasser, that's not bad either, because we know what ex-boyfriends will do, don't we? But is this movie slowing down, or is it just me? How many scenes in the, in the air ducts have we had? 18, 20 scenes in the air ducts. I love when he walks into the middle of the cafeteria, though, with that big needle, and he injects the jello without anybody seeing him. Talk about suspense. And that last part also had my favorite line while he's sewing up the guy's lips. No more boring speeches from you, Ed. <laughs> okay, time for the thrilling climax to The Surgeon. Go. We haven't talked about hospital food tonight, have we? I have just one word for those of you who have to eat that stuff. Esophago-gastro-duodenoscopy. <laughs> Ask for it by name. 
Back to Joe Bob Summer School and the Surgeon on TNT. Very nice final scene with the final image of the smashed hypo. And I love the scene where he had the bone saw and she had the defibrillator and they were discussing what went wrong with the relationship. <laughs> We've all been there, right? But at the very end, did the good guy die? Is James Remar dead? That's against the rules. You can't have the love interest hang in there through the whole movie and then waste him in the last five seconds. That's like having an aortocoronary bypass with combined right and left cardiac catheterizations and then choking on an M&M. You guys know what I'm talking about? You know. Okay, I want to thank our guest lecturer, Dr. Kenneth Saporin, and the bride of Joe Bob here for waiting so nicely for me to finish the show. And uh, also, let me remind you that next week's class here at Joe Bob Summer School is Pop Culture 201, specifically the supreme importance of Route 66 in American iconography. And we'll be watching two nouveau classic road movies, The Blues Brothers and Pee Wee's Big Adventure, because if Pee Wee Herman's not college course material, I don't know what it is, right? <laughs> All right, you uh, remember what I taught you, honey? I'm sorry, I left the toilet seat down, Joe Bob. I will leave it up from now on. Good girl, okay. <laughs> and that's it for me, Professor Joe Bob Briggs, reminding you that if your dog is fat, you aren't getting enough exercise. Did you guys hear the one about the middle-aged woman who has a heart attack? She's uh, taken to the hospital, and while she's on the operating table, she has a near-death experience. And she sees God. And she asks God, is this it? And God says, no, you have another 43 years, two months, and eight days to live. So the woman recovers, and she decides to stay in the hospital and have a facelift, liposuction, breast augmentation, and a tummy tuck. And she even has somebody come in and color her hair, thinking that since she has so much more time to live, she might as well make the most of it. So she gets out of the hospital after the last operation, and while she's crossing the street, she's hit by a car and is killed instantly. And she goes to heaven and she says to God, I thought you said I had another 43 years to live. And God says, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> Joe Bob Briggs reminding you that the drive-in will never die. Okay, a woman is on her deathbed. And her husband is maintaining, maintaining a vigil by her side. He holds her hand and tears run down his face and they, his tears splash onto her face and they wake her up. And she looks at him and her lips begin to move and she whispers, my, my darling husband. And the husband says, hush, my love, go back to sleep. She doesn't talk. But she insists, she says, I, I have to talk to you. I, I have something I have to confess to you. And the husband says, there's nothing to confess. It's all right. Everything's all right, so just go to sleep now. And the woman says, no, no, I must, I must die in peace. I slept with your brother, I slept with your best friend, and I slept with your father. And the husband manages a pained smile, and he strokes her hand, and he says, hush now, don't torment yourself. I know all about that. Why do you think I poisoned you? <laughs> We're going to have fun, aren't we?